Hi there friends, welcome back to another video on Paying It Forward. Last week I was very fortunate to go to the Microsoft Power Platform conference in Las Vegas. Um, and during that conference there was a lot of interesting announcements, particularly around AI. One of the techniques for presenting information that you would get from an interaction with AI is something called adaptive cards. Um, and it's a technology that I sometimes feel like people aren't that familiar with. It's something that they may not be aware of. Um, so the purpose of today's session is to kind of talk to you a little bit about what adaptive cards are and how you don't have to go in, into a deep learning on how to apply them, but you can quite quickly and efficiently develop them actually leveraging the power of AI ultimately. So uh, let's jump into it. All right, so first of all, what are adaptive cards? So adaptive cards are a way to present rich interactive content within conversations, notifications, or dashboards. And that's really a key point here. If you um, present text in a box or if you're chatting to someone in text, then typically you would get a text response. But if you're dynamically generating content, either through something like ChatGPT or through a notification in a system, you may want to present that in a more rich and interactive way, for example, with a button on it so that the person who's receiving the message can reply to it. Um, the way in which these um, cards are developed is using, uh, they're kind of like snippets of UI um, and they're offered in JSON. Um, and uh, apps, this means the reason that this is, is that they, it's so that they can be widely used across a range of different platforms. Um, and they're typically used to display content and enable interactivity across platforms like Teams, Outlook and Windows and more. Let's take a look at an example of an adaptive card. So this is from the uh, Teams website. Um, so if you have a look here, you can see some examples of uh, messages just written into a chat, which would be kind of just plain text. And then you can see the difference that an adaptive card presents in the sense that there is you know, a header within the text, there's a subtitle, there's a body, and then there's actions or buttons that can be configured. All of the elements that are presented on the card can ultimately be configured. So the ability to do something dynamically, to do something that you can then present in the conversation that's useful, um, it obviously increases. Um, and for me, kind of learning about how to do this um, and making it work is something uh, very valuable. It's been made even more valuable based on this demo that I saw last week at um, the Microsoft Power Platform conference that's uh, listed from their website. Um, and if you see in here, we're presenting a co-pilot within a actual um, application. And I'm just going to pause it here for a second um, whilst we're watching this video back. But there's an interaction going on here between uh, someone who's trying to get this Ryan Cunningham to be a visitor to a uh, external site. Um, and they're asking for an ID to be created uh, for their for their visit. And if you see, <clears throat> once you confirm the site number, it presents to you back here an adaptive card. So this actually, what you can see on the screen here, um, this area, this is actually an adaptive card that's being rendered back. Um, and yet this is being rendered back with something called a Copilot, which for any of you who've been tracking the announcements on Microsoft, there's Copilots everywhere. So um, this, for me, again, it shows that um, the way of presenting data back in adaptive cards isn't just reserved for um, working in messages in Teams, but also for making interactivity directly within your applications. In this case, this is in a power app. Let's finish watching the demo. You'll see here as well, there is then a, a secondary response confirming the details of the card. Um, and then you can actually see in the details here of the request submitted that there are then two options that are presented in the, in the card uh, to either update or cancel the request based upon the information that's been provided. Now we have a bit of information about what adaptive cards are. Let's talk about how you create them. All right, if you come to the adaptivecards.io forward slash designer, you will see there is this design canvas where you can actually manually create your own adaptive card. There's also a number of samples that are available as well. You can see on the right side here what the rendered JSON code would present back as in terms of a template. And you can see there's a number of different examples that have been created, like an order delivery, a restaurant, a sporting event, weather, and all kinds of different things. 
typically, if you were developing an adaptive card, you would need to have an understanding of the various different card elements to be able to render your card um, appropriately and also understand how to actually take the payload of the card and use that effectively in terms of customizing certain references to make them work for, uh, for example, if you're referencing an image, in this case, you can see a picture of, of Matt in, in the card here is rendered, um, how you would do that and so on and so forth. But um, as with everything, I think there's an easier way to do some of this stuff. Um, and um, for me, that's part of the purpose of this video is to show you an, an alternative approach uh, to developing adaptive cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to step into ChatGPT um, and we're going to use ChatGPT to actually help us develop cards instead of it doing it ourselves manually. In this case, I'm going to provide a description. So I've just developed a sample prompt in this example where I'm saying, please generate an adaptive card that will work as a form to request key customer contact details from a new customer that's interacting with a sales agent. There should be a logo placeholder at the top of the card, so a place to place the image of the company. Um, each section where contact details are captured, um, it should be possible to expand and retract based on what information you're filling in. So if you imagine like where you can press a button and then the section will open or close. Um, and then at the bottom, there should be a button to submit. So if we just hit send the message. So now we've slowed down the video. What we can basically see at the top here is that there is um, some JSON code uh, that's talking about the adaptive card uh, that has a placeholder for the image that has text blocks for capturing the new customer details and input boxes for both the first and last name and email. Um, and then you have buttons that can basically toggle the visibility. But let's take a look at, at this in terms of uh, does this render properly? Is this something that works? So when you're generating adaptive cards um, like the JSON manifest, like we are here in um, ChatGPT or in, an, in another AI tool, you can then come back to the designer, you can delete, you can um, create a new card from blank, um, and then you can just paste in the actual, um, you know, uh, manifest that you got into the bottom bit here. And then when you hit the preview mode at the top, you can actually see what the card would look like. And then you can see here when I hit expand and retract, you can see it basically expands and retracts the, the row underneath where there's additional information that you would be capturing. So already without doing any coding at all um, in terms of preparing the JSON manifest, I've been able to very easily um, create um, a, a basic version of a card. Um, I can now go into some of the elements so you can see there's an image um, component here um, where it's asking me to provide my URL. Um, let's go and uh, grab an image. So I'm going to pick this very random image here uh, from, uh, and I'm going to copy the image link. And then if I come back to the designer, I can then place the URL of the image that I've uh, taken. And then you can see that I now have the image rendering uh, in the form as well. What can be particularly helpful when you're you know using this approach to designing your adaptive cards is that all of the card structure has been uh, is presented on the right hand side over here. And when you see this for the first time, it might be quite hard to follow. But, you know, you once you um, develop more and more adaptive cards, you get even more uh, familiar with the structure of how they're set up. Um, and the fact that it's all done for you without even lifting in a couple of seconds, um, you know, really pays dividends in terms of what you need. You can obviously then uh, do like any person would with uh, ChatGPT is that you can add uh, back if it doesn't meet your requirements. You can say, for example, you could say, for example, I want to also capture the address fields for the customer. OK, so we've got some updated uh, code here uh, that we can use. So we're going to copy the code and bring it back to the designer. And we're going to paste it in. And you can now see that I have um, extract and retract information for both additional and for address info. So if we quickly preview the card. You can then see I can expand and retract the address information and I can then expand and retract 
the additional information. So um, I'm going to go back in and also update the logo that so I've got it like I had it before as well. So now I've got a form, let's see what it would look like when it renders in Teams. So what I'm doing is I'm going to create a very basic Power Automate uh, flow, which will basically send an adaptive card to me in Teams, and it will wait for my response. The reason we're using this action in Power Automate is because we are expecting a response back from the user um, in terms of those fields, the customer information that we're presenting to them we're expecting a response back from that. We're ready to test. Let's give this a go. All right, the test is running. Let's have a look at and see what it renders like in Teams. So you can see here on the screen that the card that I was looking at has rendered in this following way. Um, the action inside of Power Automate is waiting because it's waiting for me to complete the re re request. I can also hit the buttons and expand the details forms so I can actually see additional information that I would need to fill in. And let's just fill it in with test information. Okay, so I've given it some information. I can hit submit. And then my response has now been sent back to Power Automate. And if I come back into the card here, I can see all of the fields that were specified and I can then take those value, values and use them to, for example, store them in a database or use them for something else. So what did we look at today? First, we looked at what adaptive cards are. They're basically a way of presenting information in a really nice design, in a really interactive way, where you're not just receiving a message, but where you can actually interact with it as well. The outputs of that interaction can then be used, perhaps in storing in a database, in a system and so on. We looked at why are these quite important now, why are adaptive cards becoming more important now? Because as we interact more with chatbots, with more with systems like uh, generative AI, uh, through systems like ChatGPT or uh, the various different Microsoft Copilots, you know, the way in which data will be presented to us will be in adaptive cards so, because it will be more interactive. So knowing how to develop those yourself can be quite useful as well. Lastly, we looked at how you would develop this yourself um, and how you can use uh, generative AI yourself uh, to benefit from using the knowledge base of AI to help you to format and shape the design of a card yourself without really having to do much work at all. With that, I just want to say thanks again for joining a video. Don't forget to uh, pay it forward in terms of the knowledge you've learned here today and looking forward to seeing you on another video soon. A quick note at the end here for those of you still watching, there was so many an amazing announcements at Microsoft Power Platform Conference. I'm really interested to talk more with you about them. If you would like to learn more about those, please drop a comment down below. Um, I'm, I would love to record like a longer video explaining some of the, let's say, more um, critical announcements there in terms of my takeaways, what I thought from those. Um, so I would love to have the opportunity to share that with you. Thanks again. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and look forward to seeing you on another video soon. Bye now.